below. So, <clears throat> I wanted to share a couple of um, a couple of concepts and a couple of, I guess, some of my personal experience um, when it comes to, I guess. Um, The, what's called the dark night of the soul so the dark night of the soul it, it kind of comes across as ooh, some kind of spiritual type um, you know analogy but in reality what it is is your I guess the breaking down of what's called the ego or the the identity that is created by the mind or the uh, you know the but the beliefs around who you are and it I mean it's all open to interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day to understand um, these these concepts I suppose is to understand them for yourself so you can I guess it's 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 kind of like I said a breaking down of the ego it's where and when I say the ego everybody has an identity um, who they believe themselves to be and a lot of it a lot of it is is learned and a lot of it is passed on through generations um, and we it's basically the way it's developed is by not being able to completely understand emotions um, so basically we have an emotion um, from a smaller age and the parent or the the caregiver or the adult that was around when that emotion was there behaved in a certain way which from that place we if it's repetitive um, behavior from the parent or caregiver um, we start to you know believe things about ourselves or they'll even tell us this is why you feel like this and um, so you develop a story around an emotion um, each particular emotion is in itself quite harmless and you know when we attach these stories to these emotions um, I feel sad because I'm a bad person you know these types of things these stories these these are subconscious stories that have been sort of entrained into us you know on a on an energetic level we start to believe this shit you know we start to believe that we are these things and we you know we we attach more pieces of ideas and concepts of our identity to these to these uh, emotion you know these emotions because we, we start to resist the emotions because we don't want to feel like shit all the time and feel sad all the time. So we we make up stories about who we are um, to, to hide the fact that we feel sad inside and things like this. So you could call that, you know, you can imagine the amount of belief systems that, you know, we, we accumulate through this process and through growing up in the world and adding 
constantly adding little stories and because everybody else is adding stories so that's what we do we follow other people we our attention is always out there looking and seeking and searching for another way to cover up that pain and um, the pain eventually eventually becomes uh, we collect so we can only collect so much pain right and the behaviors that come from collecting that much pain bring more pain <laughs> they attract they attract more pain so people in pain attract people who are in in pain um, as well or, or you know so I guess the concept of the dark night of the soul is to break away the bullshit <clears throat> about who you are and reveal the truth about who you are. A lot of the times, I guess, for example, um, beliefs, right? So... We, we grow up with these beliefs that somebody's going to come in and make us happy, right? They're going to come in and they're going to stick around and they're going to do all these amazing things for us and they're going to love us and they're going to, they're going to eventually, you know, marry us and, and all these things. And, like, I'm not condoning any of these things because these things are great experiences. It's the need for these things to to feel fulfilled so we we've just we've designed these beliefs around um <clears throat> so somebody's gonna love me if i do this if i do that when i am this person when i you know there's all these ideas and things that the world has about these these things and <clears throat> um basically they're bullshit well you know, you look at look at them for what they are, and you, I mean, you can go into the depths of understanding why pain attracts pain. So I guess a lot of people are in pain, but are in denial of pain, or in denial that it's there. These beliefs that they have about themselves, they don't want to look at them. Um, they don't want you to look at them. They're not going to show you. And I guess, you know, the awareness and acknowledgement of these things, if they're, if they're there within you at, at this point, you know, in your life right now, uh, is, the, is the catalyst to letting them go. And it's understanding that uh, there there is higher consciousness um, that exists in every moment. It exists right now, you know, within you and outside of you. And the intelligence in that is basically the intelligence that that. Um, created it you know created all this and you and at the very same time is you <laughs> so it's about letting go of the, all these little stories and and then letting go of these painful stories um sometimes can be uncomfortable so we hide them we hide these these little fears and these little stories in what's called the subconscious mind. We store them there energetically, little little uh, beliefs about ourselves, and then we've we've covered them up with with uh, other other beliefs or stories on top of those, and stories on top of those, and stories on top of those, and, and layers and layers and layers and layers over top of the pain that's there. And the pain is the bullshit anyway. I mean, you feel it, yeah, and all the little stories 
that we use to cover up it, up the, up the pain, is the bullshit stories. Um, and basically, what the dark night of the soul is, is, let's just say, that higher consciousness that you are, taking control, forcing you to look at these things, forcing you to feel what the pain basically that you've carried around and you've denied it, you've ignored it, it's there, it's been there the whole time, you've just, like everybody else, learned to cover it up with with other things and and things like ideas concepts um you know you you know i suppose placing expectations on other people that make you happy you know the, these types of ideas and these things they feel i guess it's they feel okay, um, those types of ideas, and then they sort of distract from from that that you know looking at at these these scary thought patterns that are there, and these emotional patterns that are there. And dark night of the soul is basically, for lack of a better word, your higher self or you know, your consciousness or your soul, okay? Your soul is taking charge. Um, forcing you unwillingly, pretty well, um, because basically, let's, let's face it, what's called the ego or the, uh, the, the concept the concepts that we've constructed or have been constructed for us to believe that we are believes they believe that part believes it's in control and it's constantly trying to control it's constantly trying to i guess what you call manipulate and and distort and uh you know look at things and hide other things and you know all of these things <clears throat> which is what it's designed to do. It's designed to cover up pain. That's why it's there. And what it doesn't know, what this conceptual mind who you think you are doesn't know, is by experiencing that pain, releasing the pain, letting it be there, accepting it's there, um, giving it attention, right? Uh, not the story around the pain, but just the, just the feeling, um, you're willing to let go of the story, the pain will come up, right, and, and if you're, um, <clears throat> once you can accept that it's there, it's, it's, uh, I guess it will dissolve, if that makes sense. It will, you know, moment by moment, day by day, it'll wash away. It'll burn away. Um, you know, it can feel like fire sometimes. And it, you, if you sit in the fire, it will burn away all of those old beliefs. And if you're willing to uh, accept, <clears throat> firstly, that it's there, Secondly, that it's uncomfortable. Thirdly, that it's not you. you know, it's just accumulation of ideas. And they don't feel good, these ideas and thoughts. Um, so, we've, we've, we've clung to the... Cl clung. <laughs> we've clung to those. Um, so that we have a sense of identity. We cling to our pain. We recreate our pain we attract more people that are going to cause us more pain bring the pain out i should say because the pain's already there we're just going to attract other people um usually they're they're in denial about their own pain 
and they'll blame you, um, I guess, for their the pain that's that's there, um, you know, because you're such a bad person, and you'll feel like a bad person. So, I mean, these types of ideas that we have about ourselves, and understanding that <clears throat> there has to be a catalyst. Let's just say your soul, the soul, that consciousness, that the awareness that we are, has an intelligence that is beyond the mind. It is beyond concepts. It is beyond uh, beliefs, right? It's beyond beliefs. It doesn't need beliefs. <laughs> and the, the dichotomy is that we are that. And we can know that, not just believe it as a concept. We can know it. And I, I guess the, the part that separates the ego, which is, uh, as I said, the identity, from that, which is the soul, is all, is, is the, I guess, the mind constantly chattering. It's chatter, 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 chatter. And it's judging, and it's judging you, and it's uh, just basically just rambling on the shit all the time. You cannot, I guess, identify um, that higher part of yourself, which is basically to know that is not thought. It's not emotion, and it's not the little images that pop up in your awareness that the mind puts in there, or I guess what we call daydreaming or imagining. I mean, we, we use our minds to do this, right? However, a lot of the times the mind is on autopilot, constantly putting little images in there that we don't like or images in there that we do like and we I guess it grabs our attention doesn't it ideas about ourselves they grab our attention they you know we want to believe these things which is you know it is that is what it is it's about understanding that we are that higher space of consciousness the higher awareness and the mind uh, as it is is thought patterns emotions images and we do have a choice to, I guess, give these things that the mind presents to us attention. Understanding that our attention on these ideas like, oh, I need somebody to love me, otherwise I'll never feel complete and whole. Blah, 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 blah. You know, these things. I mean, I'm not making fun, but it's the truth. We, we do believe this bullshit. And, I mean, look at your own life. Is, is this true for you? Did somebody come into your life and say, I'm going to be with you forever. I love you. Oh my God. You, th you know, these, these, these types of concepts. And you believe them, don't you? Because why? Because these beliefs, you believe these people... Um, because, you know, I guess you, you, you want it to be true, but, and it might, it might cruise along like that for a while, and then things start to not quite go to plan, right? No, this isn't, this isn't supposed to be like this. Your mind's saying, no, this isn't, no, what's, what's happening? Why are they doing this to me? Oh my God, I can't believe this. 
how dare they? You know, these types of thoughts that pop in your head because you placed all these expectations on these beliefs. The beliefs about how life should be. No, you're supposed to stay with me because how am I ever supposed to love myself and feel whole and complete? You know, all this bullshit. <clears throat> and, like, I'm not, I'm not condoning um, relationships and, and things because they're beautiful. Um, to find, you know, or, or to allow somebody into your life that, uh, you know, you can admire and respect and, and you know, enjoy um, when they're there is great. It's, I guess, the mind has developed, you know, ideas around these things and beliefs around these, um, around yourself in relation to uh, these situations. So it's basically, well, if, if you have expectations of the other people, you're placing unrealistic expectations on people that, you know, they do all these things for you and it's not their responsibility to love you forever. It's yours. And by placing these unrealistic unreal expectations on people to love you, how do they know how to love you? It's if you don't. Um, I guess understanding that the ego, as I've mentioned earlier, um, needs, needs to be loved and you know parts of the ego and that identity need that attention from you so and uh, and there's a lot of parts of the ego that uh, i guess let's say want negative attention so they're gonna do uh you know like like the little kid throwing the tantrum you know that part I guess that's the sort of part you don't really want to pay attention to you give I mean you acknowledge that however the thought patterns that are around when this arises um, I guess throwing a tantrum and demanding that somebody come back to you because they've left um, you know that's I guess that's like the, the bossy little three or four year old, which, uh, you know, basically is trying to control the situation by becoming angry. I mean, it's, it's, it's what little, little kids do. And, um, I mean, it's not about blaming or or feeling guilty about these patterns because these patterns were the, are there and they're there in 99.9% .9 of people so don't feel bad about it it's understanding that why they're there um, letting go of those thought patterns that are there to be present with those thoughts and emotions, understanding that you can put space between having those reactions and how you respond. So slowing down, taking a breath, letting it all go. You let those thoughts go. You let the anger be there. You bring yourself back 
to this moment. Because those emotions are the past. They're trying to relive themselves through you. It is basically the little the little four year old, three year old, two year old. Still there wanting attention. And the only way it knows how to get attention is by screaming at people, demanding of people. And eventually it works. I guess it worked when you were when you were that age. It doesn't work now, does it? Throwing a tantrum works for a while. Um, when you're a big big person, but it's not very long before the other person gets sick of that. <laughs> you know, and they throw their own little tantrum, which is probably to leave or ignore or to whatever whatever their their I guess reaction is understanding that these I guess painful patterns are tied into belief systems. They're, they're tied into beliefs about ourselves. So if I am I if I'm angry at somebody and throw a tantrum, I can control them. I can make them come back. I can make them, you know, be scared that they're going to lose me and and you know these all these ideas, and they just push people away. Um. Anyway, understanding that. The catalyst, okay, so we'll chat about the catalyst. There's a catalyst um, for the dark night of the soul, which is usually, from what I've seen and experienced, another person. So this person, um, again, it might not be you know, person, the catalyst, it could be a situation, but, uh, this, this person, you're basically what you call be in love with. So when I say be in love with, it's the ideas of what we believe love to be. So they do all the things we want them to do and they're nice to us and they buy us things or they say nice things to us and they tell us they're going to be here forever these ideas their ideas their concepts and then you know they'll never they'll always be faithful oh yes i'll always be faithful to you my love blah, 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 blah. you know and all these things which i mean i'm not I'm not saying that's I'm not making fun of being faithful because i guess it's it's a good um quality but saying that they'll be faithful and then you believing them because you have all these ideas and emotional attachment to the idea of them um, basically you know and it might not be telling the truth and I mean what's your experience people that have told you that they're going to be around and not do these things that you've, you know, that are going to hurt you, and then they do them anyway. Um, so, these conditions that we project on the people, um, you know, our fears, fears that we've put in place around covering up the pain that's there. So the catalyst is going to be somebody who's unlike anyone anyone you've ever met before. Um, they're very peaceful. 
for lack of a better word, you, you'll feel in this situation like you're at home. So you'll feel like this person is the one, right? This person is just, it's, it's undescribable, indescribable, cannot describe how, for lack of a better word, how you feel when this person comes into your life. And, I mean, this is only my own experience, so I'm not saying this is your experience, but when they come into your life, everything is just amazing. Everything is just crazy amazing, for lack of a better word. And your mind, your ego is going to say, oh my god, what, what is going on here? This person is just like heaven. This is, this person is, when you're around this person, you're complete. You know, these, these types of ideas. And the, the ego is going to step aside and, and completely fall away, you know, the ideas of things, you know. They, they start to fade and, and you know, the, the thoughts are there, you, you let them go because, you know, the thoughts might be, you know, might be judgments on this person and, and you're like, no, what are you talking about? And, you, and you, you can hear your own thoughts and let them go around this person. And it's so easy to do because this person, you know, uh, you just want them around all the time, right? And, you know, it might be a short time that they're there. It might be, you know, a past love. Somebody that you've already met, you know, years and years and years and years ago. And you still think about them, you know. And... It's just basically it's it's a soul connection. Um, so you know you hear of people say soulmates and you know all these things. It's my soulmate. <laughs> and okay, yeah, that's cool. And I'm not making fun of that. However, there is a, for lack of a better word, a connection um, with this person, like you've met them before, like you know on the deepest possible levels that this person is for you okay so in my experience uh, let's just say I had an awakening before I met this person um, so I became aware that I am not the mind. I actually physically experienced um, even visually I could see um, what's called consciousness or presence a presence that was there. It was just a stillness that was there. It was just always there. And I can see the thoughts coming in. And I could see this the presence. It's like I could sense and feel the presence. 
who was there. So I knew that these thoughts weren't me. And uh, it was it was static bliss. It was absolute I don't know euphoria to know that these thoughts were coming in. Judgments of people and all these things that I wasn't that. It was fucking amazing to feel free of that. It, it was it was indescribable. It was I don't know, it was so liberating to, to realise that I wasn't these things that I'd thought I was all my life. I wasn't the thoughts. I didn't have to listen to the thoughts. They were there. But I could just continue with my life and do what the fuck I want to do. Instead of listening to these 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 horrible thoughts about people and myself. Anyway. This went on for about a month or two. And it was again indescribable. People people were just gravitating towards me. And you know, my body was in peak form. Like I said, my mind was was quiet. And it was it was just peaceful. It was like there was a space that opened up around me and everything and, and I mean the identity was there but there was no pain there. It was indescribable. What people what people are uh, describe as called samadhi. Samadhi? Samadhi. Or Nirvana, you know, these things and, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I just thought, shit, life's getting good. What? Finally. Because I'm doing what I want to do. I'm all these. My life is my life. And it was great. And I thought, well, you know what? It'd be fucking great to be able to, to share it with someone just as cool as me, you know? And who. There's someone fun and all, all these things that I imagined. And I thought, well, this didn't really need anybody at the moment. But it'd be great if someone popped it, popped, you know, popped into my. <laughs> popped into my life <clears throat> excuse me and uh anyway it wasn't long and, and they did um so I had a few ideas about the person that I wanted you know I wanted to uh appear in my life and, and it wasn't long and there she was she was there, like r right there. And I guess understanding that when I was around her, there was thoughts that had come in. Thoughts that, you know, weren't, were not pretty judgmental and, and not nice. And I'm like, fuck off thoughts. What are you there for? Like, this person's fucking amazing. Why would you even consider thinking about this? You know, and I learned to let them all go when I was around this person. I let all those thoughts go because they're all bullshit, you know. And this person became more and more and more amazing and indescribable. Okay, um, it wasn't long at all, and this person was became my world, right? So I, I slowly began to. Let's say what people call fall in love. So all these emotions were coming up, and oh my god! And I was sending her all these 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 things and messages all the time, constantly backwards and forwards with messages, and going to see her all the time, and all of these things that I was doing, you know, for this person, and she loved it, you know, she was loving it. She said, "Oh, you're the greatest thing that's ever come into my life. Oh, I love you so much." It's so amazing, and all these things, and I believed them all, and, you know, you know, I remember, I was letting go of all these thoughts, and it was so easy to do it with this person, and then there was the emotions that were coming up, hmm, they're quite niggly little emotions that were there, fears, and, and 
doubts, feeling like, mm, you know, disbeliefs and, and, you know, like jealousy type things and uh, shame and, you know, just these little things that have started niggling, you know. This is after being with her for probably a year. A year of amazingness, you know. And then there was the next phase, which was the emotions that were coming up. They were coming up, I didn't know why they were there. There was jealousy there, there was a bit of jealousy, and, and it would pop up, and we'd talk about it, and I know, I'd, I'd say. And I didn't understand why it was there, because I trusted this person. Let's say. Let's say I'd what's called trust, right? So I believe this person. And I had no reason not to. Anyway. The thoughts were there. I let them go. The emotions were there. I wasn't able to let them go. It was easy. They were coming up every day more and 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 more. more. Emotions would pop up. What's called love, but, you know, oh, I'm feeling this way because I love this person and I need to spend more time with her and, and all these ideas that I had and beliefs that this person was going to stay around with me and she'd say that too. She's going to stay with me forever. I'm always going to be there for you. I'm always going to support you. And I'd say the same thing back to her, you know. We'd skip around and, like, it was fucking great. It was a great fun time. The only thing that was not great was was all these emotion emotions were there. They were getting in the way. I was like, well, come on, man. What's the go with these emotions? Come on. I'm I'm with this the person I've been looking for and searching for all my life and then now all these all these emotions. And then on top of those emotions there's more emotions that attach to these emotions and you know, so I'd feel jealous jealousy, what's called jealousy, and, and didn't know why, and, you know, I guess, then there was shame on top of that, because I was ashamed, that I was feeling these things, and oh my god, it was more, and more, and more, and more, and eventually, because I was fully focused on this person, and I wasn't giving any attention to these emotions, and learning to let, you know, to regulate, to, to allow, give myself space to release, relax, accept these emotions. I wasn't doing that because I was constantly focusing my attention on it, her, constantly. When I wasn't with her, I was thinking about things I could do for her, and when I was going to see her, and, and what I was going to buy for her, and what trips we were going to have, and how our life was going to be together, and, you know, I wonder what it's, all these ideas about her, <laughs> and denying giving myself any attention. Um... So anyway, a year went past, and you know, obviously we've had sometimes the emotions would be too would would be too much for me, and and not knowing what they are, um, I didn't really even know what emotions were because I'd suppressed them for so long. I didn't even know why they why were they there. But anyway, and my mind. The mind, the thoughts, we're going crazy. You're feeling like this because she is doing this to you. I'm like, no, she's fucking not. My emotions are getting more and more and more intense. So then, I was acting on them emotions. I was behaving in ways that, I guess, uh... I was running away, I guess. That's what I was, particularly in my situation, I would do. I would run. Run away. I'd hide. 
because this person's scaring me now. I'm feeling these these painful emotions. And this person, no matter how much I run, no matter, no matter how much I behaved irrationally, or no matter how much I was uh, clingy, let's just say clingy, had these clingy patterns going on for a while, you know, needing all these things from this other person, no matter what they were, she always would, I suppose, entertain them. So she'd entertain these beliefs. I guess she believed them herself as well. Uh, we both believed these things and we both played into and fed these things. And I guess like I said, all my attention was was on ideas of her. The emotions eventually got that intense that we could be you know spending time together. We hadn't seen each other for a long time. We'd spend time together and when no when we were the emotions would be that painful that I couldn't enjoy her. I couldn't. And I fucking hated myself for it. Let's just say, so there's another pattern. So there's, I was blaming myself, which is, which is, uh, more emotions on top of the emotions that were already there. And then I blame myself for those emotions. So, I mean, it was understanding that all of these expectations and things that I was placing on this person and myself through all these beliefs I had about everything. And I guess this went on for a year. And it was so intense. The emotional side of things was just like off the charts. It was so painful. And to be away from her was, you know, it was excruciating pain. And I'd constantly be trying to alleviate that by, you know, constantly trying to talk to her and be around her and soon as I was around this person, you know, everything would fall away. The, the thoughts would be quiet. The pain would go away. You know, it'd feel peaceful. And this was just getting more and more intense. As time went along, more and more patterns were coming up. I didn't know they were patterns. I thought, this is, oh my God, this is who I am. Oh my God, I need to change. Oh my God, I'm such a bad person. Like I used to tell myself these things. Or I used to hear these thoughts and I was believing these emotions as well. So, you know, making myself feeding into these stories about myself and it was all self detriment you know it was and I guess I think you know this person believed this as well you know on a subconscious level believed that I am a bad person on a subconscious level outside of her awareness by her actions and by her energy, she believed this about me. And it was triggering these responses, these 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 feelings of low self-worth. Um, and let's just say the next year, so this is two years, the next year was 
crazy. It was desperation. We both desperately wanted to be around each other to the point where we lost ourselves. We both lost ourselves. We both were that. Let's just say in we believed the emotions that we were having so 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 much that we were both basically we we're both in pain because you know the emotional patterns would come up Okay, I feel like this because of this reason, because you're doing this. This is what our minds were telling us. Not actually willing to entertain the truth that these are our personal emotions and our personal responsibility to give them attention. Not relying on each other to make each other feel better every time they come up. Facing these emotions. I guess ups and downs and breakups and drama and constant changes. Um, we lived together for a while, and then we didn't live together for a while. Both were just triggering circumstances. Anyway, the catalyst The catalyst, uh, long story short, fast forward another year or so, uh, is this person left. This person who had completely developed a whole identity around this person who I was was defined by this person and she left just like that and that was it it was the most painful I'd say experience that I have ever gone through it was dark like dark, dark, like fucked up. What is called the dark night of the soul? The catalyst is when they leave. Or the situation, whatever your particular situation is. Mine was a person left. She left and took... Let's just say the false identity that I had of myself with her. I mean, the pain was there. It was there for, oh, well, a year, up to a year after she left. It was the, the mind, the thought patterns, went absolutely fucking insane. The thought patterns were crazy. There was nothing I could do. There was nothing, I could, nowhere I could go. There was no one I could talk to. There was absolutely nothing I could do to stop these thoughts. And they were insane. They were crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy thoughts. And everything like it didn't matter what I looked at it reminded me of her it didn't matter who was talking in the background I could hear someone talking that's her no that's not her you know and trigger every time 
I'd, I'd, I guess, entertain these thoughts. Oh, she might come back. Oh, maybe she does love me. Maybe she's... Maybe this, maybe that. But every single thought I had was about her. And every time I'd entertain these thoughts, there was an emotional trigger. Okay, so she left because I'm such a bad person. I'm a horrible person. I shouldn't be here anymore. Understanding those thoughts and the emotions and pain that they triggered by believing those things, that I shouldn't be here anymore, you know, basically disappear. You know, these types of thoughts. Um, you know, thoughts that are there and understanding that I believe those thoughts and I believe those those painful emotions that were there as well and no matter what I did no matter how much I thought about it or how bad I felt about myself or how horrible thoughts that I had in those dark times she did not come back she didn't care <laughs> you know she didn't and to understand that I didn't know what the fuck was going on I had no clue why she had hurt me so much and why she don't care and you know all of these things I mean I didn't want to be alive you know I didn't uh these things because of one person and I started to realize you know that well, there's nothing left to do there is nothing left to do I am a bad person I am no good I am these things that she, uh, you know, these things that I believe about myself by the way that she behaved. And I guess by accepting that pain that was there, the pain started to change I started to still thinking about it all the time constantly I mean insane thoughts constantly but the pain wasn't as intense you know this is months months and months after after this uh, still in the dark night of the soul energy and still releasing all this shit all this pain that I've created around or has been let's just say I've taken on board into my uh, identity and around who I am um, I was letting all that shit go I was completely in solitude I isolated myself because I'm such a bad person and I don't want to hurt anyone else right so this is the uh, beliefs that I had around myself and I believe this shit and I did I isolated, I isolated myself um, let's just say, so talking about the dark night of the soul, releasing all of this, these, these things, these ideas around somebody, uh, and this pain that you were hiding, then there was a space that opened up, sort of similar to the space that I described, you know, not ecstatic bliss, it was far from that, but it was a space, it was... Just a little bit of space. And it allowed me to be able to breathe every now and then. A little bit. You know, I started to... Uh, started to meditate. Every, every day. 
every morning and every night, meditate. Um, you know, I started to look at, at different, different things would appear. Let's just say that different ideas, different, uh, new things would appear in front of me as if were put there by the universe itself, right? So there's, there was new concepts, ideas, new people started to come into my life very, very, very slowly. And when I least, when I least expected it, so friends would 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 just you know call me and say, hey, have you you know have you how are you how how have you tried this and uh, you know they'd send me a YouTube clip or or something and it would just you know it was like I was learning a new way to be. So there was. Um, the concepts, different concepts of what the dark night of the soul was. So I, I mean, I googled that shit. And I read about it and I looked at it and I thought, what the fuck? This has been nearly a year for me. And people are saying that this thing only lasts, you know, for some a few days or a few months. It's been a fucking year. And if you want to. Add into that the the year that I guess I was with the person and and the pain that was there in that time, you know, it's years for me, and I'm thinking, well, why is this so intense from from my particular situation? And I still can't answer that. I guess it doesn't really, it's irrelevant. It's it's it just shows how much pain I'd suppressed, you know, in the the, the years that I've been alive and. How much I had to face that, and understanding that I had no control over that, the person's not going to come back. Um, there was no interest there at all. There was what's called ghosting. So I would, you know, they ghost, they disappear, they, they block, they, you know, they do all these things, or they're off, they're straight off with other people, and it, it hurts. You know, it's pain. The pain comes up, and you know, to let go of the blame on that other person, and realize that that pain's within you and your responsibility. Uh, you're able to to refocus your attention um, back to the present moment, and understanding that what the dark night of the soul is, is releasing all that shit energy that you've carried around your whole life. Uh, and coming out of the other side of that, I know probably a lot of you guys seem to be in that dark night of the soul energy and like I, I, I feel for you. Because it fucking sucks. Understanding that you are more than your thoughts. You are more than your emotions. And these ideas and uh, images. You can create space between these things. You are the space between these things. Understanding that you are consciousness, you are aware of these things. You're watching these things. Um, and any thoughts in any moment you can let go of. And learning by refocusing your attention on the experience of this moment right now and understanding that you have been conditioned all of your life to focus all of your attention and energy on somebody else <laughs> your mind is been wired up for somebody else 
understand that your attention is your choice. You can choose to direct your attention into the present moment. To be mindful, not 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 of um, you know thoughts are there. You can be aware of those thoughts, and they might be repetitive thoughts, the same shit you've always thought about, and slowly every day moment by moment if you're committed you can break free um you can be aware of presence that you are you can be aware of the identity the mind and aware of the physical body as well the physical stuff around you be aware of these things enjoy these things and let go of the thought patterns around these things. So understand that there's the catalyst, which is, um, you know, some people call the twin flame, okay? Uh, and then the dark night of the soul. They're all concepts. They are reality. They are true, these things. And they are, let's just say, controlled by an intelligence that is not separate from you however is in control so it's understanding that the mind when we use it to create identity um, is the reason why we I guess we suffer in this life and understanding that, and understanding that we are the attention letting go of attachment to the mind that we are the mind and letting go the attachment to the body that we are the body or the things around us we are the attention. We can choose to put our attention into the present moment and release all of these things slowly. There's no time limit here. There's, there's no expectations. Expectations are those patterns that I'm speaking about and there'll be a lot of patterns that'll come up. Your job is to identify the patterns. When you identify the pattern, stop. Take a breath. Acknowledge the pattern. Name the pattern specifically. There's my self-doubt pattern. And then let it go. Quickly bring yourself into the present moment. Put your attention on the things that are around you fully. Listen to the sounds. The thoughts will come in. You don't have to listen to them. You don't have to judge the things you see. You can experience a person sitting in front of you talking to you fully. Notice the thoughts, notice the emotional trigger, there'll be triggers. Accept the triggers. Don't resist the triggers. Breathe. Commit. Fully. Make 
this about you, about your experience right now, about where you are right now, where you sit, how you feel, acknowledge it, be aware of it, don't believe the thoughts, take your attention when you, when you notice the thoughts are there, put your attention on your breath, and your thoughts might say, well, that's boring. Well, if you hold your attention on these thoughts of, it's boring, it's going to make you feel like shit, isn't it? It's going to feed, that actual thought is, will feed into that emotion of boredom. You know, jealousy, you know, another one. Um, I feel jealous. Well, there's, there's a sensation there. There's thoughts around it. I need to do this because I feel like this. You can let just let the, let those thoughts go. You don't need to do anything. Um, take that time to acknowledge that pattern, and then act from there. Hop up and act. Go and do. Or if you don't want to do, don't do. Make. An act of me not doing is still an action as well. There is no right or wrong here. There isn't. It's bullshit. That's a belief. There is no right or wrong. You don't have to control this situation. You just have to trust that there is higher intelligence. And be aware of that yourself. You know deeply inside... That there is something else going on. There is something more. That you cannot describe. That has full control over the situation. That wants you to release all this shit. All this pain and the suffering. Moment by moment by moment by moment. By acknowledging these things and letting them the fuck go. Yes, you sometimes have to be firm with these thoughts. Sometimes you have to be nice to these thoughts. You can talk to your thoughts. You can tell them to fuck off. You know, you can take control over your own mind. You are the attention. You are the control. Understand. Clearly... But there is nothing you have to do about the situation. It's all taken care of. Look for the signs. Those signs will pop up. Every fucking moment they will be there. The, th the signs. Every moment. You choose this moment right now. As opposed to those shitty, I guess, emotional patterns that are coming up. Which are the past. And then you have the fears that are going to pop up, which are the thoughts of the future. Fears. That this may happen, that may happen, this or they'll never come back, and oh, I'll be so sad, and bullshit. They might not never come back. But then again, if you aren't directing so much fear towards these people by thinking, or I'd say putting attention and energy into these thoughts, and you're just being here present in your own life um, you know and just allow that the greater consciousness to do what and trust is the biggest thing trust that this intelligence knows what the fuck it is doing it is creating the best version of you. A version of you that doesn't carry all this pain around. Doesn't care if people come or go and it's, you know, in, in your life. Because when they come, you fucking love them unconditionally, don't you? You don't fear that they're, you know, oh my god, they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And, no, you just let them be themselves. Just let them be. 
And then you can just be. There's no expectations. Understand that all these bullshit beliefs have been put there by the fucking world at large. And it is your choice to believe it. And live your life the way you want to live it. Let the person go. Let them go and do what they do. Let the pain come up. Let the triggers happen. Because they will happen. The ups and the downs will happen. Eventually, there won't be any more pain to feel. And I'm not saying that it's going to happen. It might take a year of doing this. If you commit to this every moment, to put your attention on the sounds, different dimensions, the sounds, you can look at the thoughts themselves. Just watch them. Look at the thoughts. Look at the emotions. Realize there's a pattern there that's happening. Take a breath. Feel the feelings in your body. You can actually feel like a tingling, static sensation inside your body if you put your attention there and hold it there. And you can actually put your attention on things that aren't there. The space. The air. You can sense the presence in the space. Sounds weird. But if you when you when you experience this or these these things, they're reality. They're not just ideas. They are reality. And your mind might say, what the fuck's that? What's going on? That's weird. Yeah, okay, mind, whatever. It's it is what it is, mate. You know, it's my reality. You know, it's what you know, you might experience uh telepathy, you know, things like what people call psychic you know, things, and, and you can see the future, and you know, these, these types of things that are beyond belief, it, it might came, come through for you, you know, these these gifts, and these, these ideas, and you know, these things that you believe not possible, will start to become possible in your reality. Understand that the ego runs off beliefs, and the ego will die. Who you thought you were will fucking die. And it will be painful. It will be painful. And then it will be fucking amazing. You know, ecstatic fucking bliss. And then it might go back to being painful again. Ups and downs. The mind is designed. It is designed like that. Highs and lows. Highs and lows. And here you are, the whole time, in the middle, observing. The mind will judge. What the fuck's going on? Oh my god, this is so shit. And then, the next day you wake up and it, it's great. Oh my god, this is so fucking amazing. It's about... Letting it, letting it all go. Trusting... What's happening. Trusting all... Everything you need will come. The people you need will come. The ideas you need will just appear in your mind. The realizations that will come from this will change you, for lack of a better word, into a, the best version of yourself. Let go of all that pain and you'll realize you're not changing into fucking anything. You're just being who you always were more accepting the pain of the past accept it accept not the big story that you've created around it but the pain's there acknowledge the pain release the pain the pain will release in its own time so I guess it will come up when it is the right time. There'll be a trigger. Somebody's going to trigger you. You know. It's. Look at it as. Your soul. Alright. Let's just say your soul. Is taking charge. Your soul. 
knows that you're not a, you know, needy, insignificant fucking person that needs to feel sorry for themselves and needs to be afraid of other people because they're going to hurt them. You know, all these fucking things that we believe. Your soul knows that's bullshit. Your soul wants you to experience what it knows, okay? When I say it, it is you. It's just a deeper you that is beyond thought and beyond emotions. And you can know that for yourself. You can experience that space. That space that is in, throughout and around and is everything. And you at the same time. It's both at the same time. And you can play with the what's called ego. You can play with it. You can tweak it. You can design it. You can be the fuck you want to be. And you're not going to care what anyone thinks. You're not going to care if the person that, I guess, uh, the catalyst, or, you know, the catalyst that I spoke about, um, what happens, what the outcome of that is, is going to be. You won't give a fuck. You won't care. It's about what people call loving themselves, right? How the fuck do you love yourself? Well... For a start, let go of all that shit that's not you. All that pain, be willing to let it go. To experience it day by day, moment by moment, step by step. Acknowledging the moment, things will be presented to you. Not what to accumulate as part of your identity, but what to let go of. And letting go, whether it's presented to you or not, when the trigger happens, you'll know. The soul has the fucking, the steering wheel of your life. And let go of that control. You have to, because you don't have a choice. The ego doesn't have a choice in what's happening right now. If you're going through this, surrender. Surrender. To a higher consciousness that you are it's a it's a, it's a dichotomy it's confusing to the mind the concept of of what we are but in the depths the deepest depths of what we are can't be understood it can be experienced and what we are in our depths can only be defined or for lack of a better word described as peace, as love, as enthusiasm, as vibrancy, you know, these, they're just words, but to experience what that is, and not be attached to that, or any idea of what life should be like, I guess, and let let that let your soul show you guide you and be willing to accept you know the the ups and the downs as they're going to happen uh so um in saying that the ups and the downs a lot, a lot of the time you know Part of that is to give yourself that full unconditional attention and to hold, you know, like sit, sit and do some meditation. Um, start redirecting your attention into things that keep you present here in this moment and experiencing it. Um, the painful ones, you can accept the painful triggers, acknowledge, but we don't have to believe what they're telling us about them. Um, and we can just be in this moment. Present. We can be present. Um, write that down. You know, reminders. Put them all over your house. Be present. Remember to be present. Remember to acknowledge everything around you. You've only... We're not here for that long. We're only here for a few years. 
be appreciative that we're breathing. Yeah, the emotions are coming up. They're fucked up. They're painful. However, we can choose. We can choose to put our attention present in this moment, and eventually those emotions will spin around, and the thoughts will spin around, and they'll, you know, they'll vibrate the shit out of you for a while. The mind will try and regain control. The ego will try and regain control, and it has no control. So. Just let it have a tantrum. Let the th emotions be there. Let the thoughts be there. And they will eventually go quiet. Quiet. The thoughts will be quiet. The mind's quiet. Everything's still peaceful. It is as it is as it is. You listen to the sounds, feel the sensations, feel feel the wind. You know, put yourself in situations where you are. It helps you to be more fully present. Do the things you love to fucking do. just be that's it nothing else is required you don't have to do anything to deserve this you can be at peace right fucking now be at peace with how you're feeling accept that it's a pattern name the pattern identify the pattern let the pattern be there you don't have to give it attention eventually the pattern it will, for lack of a better word, it dies. It dies painfully, you know. And and when it's gone, it doesn't come back. There's what's there is indescribable. Um, the peace that surpasses all understanding, or whatever, uh, whatever you want to call it, it is what it is. There is no person that deserves that more than the other person. Some people just don't quite have that awareness yet. They haven't, I guess, had a catalyst in their life that, that's triggered the letting go process. And understanding this is not a lonely thing as well. There's a lot of people in this world and you can reach out. You know, can let go of these beliefs that, that I'm always going to be alone or, you know, these, their beliefs. There's lots of people out there. There's lots of people going through this shit. Hence why I've posted this video to try and, try and help people understand what's happening. Um, and I'll post more. And... This is just, I guess, something in, uh, and around the concepts of the dark night of the soul, what's happening, understand that this is normal, for lack of a better word, this is part of a, a letting go process. Um, there's nothing weird about this. We're all fucking weird. We're just, some of us deny it. Um, we all are interested in the things that we can't explain and, and we can't even explain that. You know, and we are all individuals. So understand that there's a lot of people going through this shit. So having compassion for what's going on within yourself is where you start. Start always start with you because that is for lack of a better word the only thing that you can can, can control is what you let go of what you choose to do there is no right or wrong shit's gonna go pear-shaped 
I'll, I'll, I'll describe a few more things about that in another video. Um, I hope this helps some people. And, you know, understanding, understanding that uh, there is no need to label yourself through this, this situation. Just understand that, you know, for lack of a better word, you are peace. You are what's called love. And you are that awareness. And to let go of that control. Because you don't need to control. Just whatever presents itself in this moment is as it is. So, peace.